Several years ago, a story circulated about a statue of Christ in a German cathedral that was bombed during the Second World War and repaired in a very special way. In the story, the statue was rebuilt. But when the time came for the artisans to redo the hands, it was decided to leave them off entirely, placing instead an inscription at the foot of the statue reading, We are Christ's hands. This idea was in fact taken from a medieval uh, saint named Saint Teresa of Avila. A reference in one of her writings goes like this. Christ has no body now on earth but yours, no hands but yours, no feet but yours. Today we gather to give thanks for one of the most wonderful ways in which God chooses to allow us to be his hands, his feet, his eyes, his mouth, his body here on earth. And that is on this Mother's Day Sunday, this Christian Family Sunday, to take a little while, and hopefully it's not to pinpointing our mothers alone, but I think there's due praise on this Mother's Day Sunday. We pause today to give thanks for one of the most important and wonderful ways in which God chooses to use our mothers and chooses to use the Christian family as a means by which he is served and his name uplifted in our world. The foundation for this idea is captured in God's word again and again. We read in Isaiah 49, for instance, where the prophet gives thanks for the love of God, which is like the love of a mother, he says. He compares it to the love of God. Can a mother forget her child, the prophet writes? Even if he could, the Lord will not forget his children. The love of a mother for her children reflects the love of God in amazing ways. And so we pause to give thanks today for our mothers through whom each one of us receive a glimpse, a glimpse at least, of the love of God. That is not to say that our mothers are all perfect, although Jane tells me I think my mother is pretty close to perfect. You probably feel the same way about your moms. But it is true that within the Christian family, God chooses to radiate out his life as we are faithful to him. And as mothers are faithful to our God, they too can be the arms, the hands, the eyes, the love, the heart of Christ again and again. We get a glimpse through the Christian family. We get a glimpse through faithful parents of the love of God itself. It's no wonder that the scriptures again and again, and we want to just highlight them briefly today, snapshot at least of some of the scriptures, that value the love of mothers and fathers, that the love that God chooses to use to flow through them to us, his children. The fourth of the Ten Commandments, it's no surprise, focuses on the love that God chooses to flow through to us through mothers and fathers who are faithful. Honor your father and mother, the fourth commandment reads, so that you may live long in the land that I am giving you. Such a strong connection between the love of faithful parents, mothers and fathers, and the love of God itself. As those parents are faithful to God, as they open themselves to the love of God, then that love can be extended out to the children of that family from generation to generation, as the prophet, as the Old Testament says, for a thousand generations of those who are faithful, of those that love me. One of the most wonderful stories captured in a small book called the Book of Ruth in the Old Testament reflects how God, sometimes by our faithfulness in simplest ways, radiates his love out to the very world. If you know the story of Ruth, it's a, a short little, only several chapter story, but it captures the love of a daughter-in-law for her mother and the, and the love of the mother, Naomi, for her daughter-in-law, Ruth. If you know the story at all, it goes something like this. Uh, Naomi was a Jew, but during a time of great famine, she took all her family, which included uh, her daughter-in-law, Ruth, away to Moab, where the crops were seemingly growing more plentifully than they were in Israel at that time. But disaster struck them, and both Naomi's husband and also Ruth's husband passed away. 
And so these two widows were left on their own. And they said, we'll go back. Uh, step back for a second. Naomi said, Ruth, you should go back with your people to the Moabite people. Don't stay with me here in the, the devastation of this famine in Israel. But Ruth looked at Naomi, her mother-in-law, and said, I can't leave you. You know the passage perhaps very well where she said, where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. And so Ruth persuaded Naomi to stay with her in the land of Israel. Even though it was a foreign land for Ruth as a Moabitess, they stayed together out of love for each other, the love of God flowing through them. And as they opened themselves to that love over several generations, Ruth would become the great-grandmother of King David himself by allowing in a simple way in the midst of devastating times for both Ruth and her mother-in-law Naomi, opening themselves to the love of God to flow through them, eventually God would bless them and bless them and bless them. The faith of these mothers, as they entrusted themselves to God, became the hands and the arms and the heart of God to his whole people. And out of the love that Ruth had for her mother-in-law, and the mother-in-law Naomi had for her daughter Ruth would come a whole nation of God's people within Israel. Again and again we see the same story as God chooses to work through mothers, fathers, people of faith, parents of faith. Think of the wonderful story of Sarah and Abraham. Elderly people, they've been praying and praying and praying that God would bless them as he said he would with a child of promise. It was finally only in their 70s that they heard from an angel that said, you will give birth, and out of that child will come my people. But it would be in their 90s, the scriptures tell us, that finally they would have that child of promise, Isaac. And then out of their faithfulness would come more children. Rebecca would marry Jacob. Jacob would marry Rachel. And if you saw the Joseph's coat of many colors and remember any of it, you'd hear the names of the 12 tribes of Israel, which would come out of the 12 sons of Jacob and Rachel. Generation by generation by generation, as they were faithful, mothers and fathers, families together, God would reach out and be an expression of his love through their love for one another. I love the story of Moses' mother. She's named, it's not a very common name that most of us remember, but she's named as Amram. The story of her in the midst of the persecution of the Pharaoh and the Egyptian powers, trying to wipe off the face of the earth all the children of Israel. The mother, the mother of Moses places her little baby in the bulrushes, you know the story from Sunday school and church, and he is saved. And then the little child will grow into becoming a leader in the nation of of Egypt and would save and sustain the whole nation of Israel by the love, by the faithfulness, by the trust of a mother. The whole nation would be saved. Same thing is reflected in the wonderful story of the mother of Samuel who prays that she will finally give birth to a child and she does and then she immediately turns that child back over to God and trusts him back to the temple the care of the prophet Samuel. This child is raised in the faith and Samuel becomes a great prophet of God's people. But where does that possibility come from? Where does that love for God in Samuel come from? It comes from his mother who entrusted him as a wee child into God's care and keeping. God's word would flow through Samuel, but first it had to flow through his mother. And it did by her faith and her trust. Wonderful story continues into the New Testament. Names we're very familiar with. Names of mothers and fathers, parents of great faith. Mary, the mother of Jesus, opening herself as a perhaps only a teenager to the love of God to flow through her, not just to touch a nation, but to touch all of creation in her son who would become Jesus, our Savior. Or Elizabeth, her cousin, who would give birth by her faith again to a child named John, who would become the prophet announcing the coming of the Messiah, John the Baptist. 
these wonderful women of faith, these wonderful mothers of faith, worshipers, would sing to God's praises wonderful songs of their faith and their hope and their trust in God. And God would bless them again and again and again for their simple faith, for their simple trust in Him. It's not by chance that at the time of the crucifixion, when all the other disciples had fled, who remains in trust, in faith, in hope? But it's Mary. The other Mary, it says. The women remain at the cross. And who comes first on that Easter Sunday? Again, it's the mother of Jesus. And the other, other women that come to anoint the body of Jesus. Their faith still upheld despite these horrendous events of Jesus' death and burial. But they are the ones who are left. They are the ones that would pass on the message to the disciples. He is risen. He is risen. He's no longer here. Their faith again shining through. Them again being for the disciples, for the other believers, the hands of Christ, expressing the truth that God is still on the throne. We move into the story of the early church, and again we see the trust and the faith of a mother being honored. The mother of the prophet of the apostle Timothy, her name is Lois, my older sister's named after her. And her grandmother, a woman again of faith, or his grandmother, Timothy's grandmother, Eunice. And in the book of Timothy, Paul writes of their faith and how instrumental they were in sharing their faith with Timothy and him becoming a powerful Christian apostle. For I have been reminded, Paul writes to Timothy, of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Eunice and your mother Lois, and I am persuaded now lives in you as well. Again, the hands of Christ reflected in mother and grandmother. The love of Christ extended to this young Apostle Timothy, through his mother, through his grandmother, through his family of faith. What an influence that would extend out into the whole life of the early church through the love and the faith of Timothy's mother and grandmother. It's no wonder that Jesus valued mothers. God chooses to use mothers, fathers, parents of faith again and again and again. In Jesus' that last moments, thinking of his mother and her love for him, Jesus says these words to the Apostle John, who is still there at the cross. Behold your mother. Mother, behold your son. Take care of her. Take care of her after my passing. She has loved me so much. Again and again and again. And so we have a wonderful hymn, and unfortunately it's not recorded in our it's not uh, picked up in our new hymn book. It's kind of a, an unfortunate. When mothers of Salem, their children brought to Jesus, stern disciples drove them back and bade them to depart. But Jesus saw them ere they fled and quickly smiled and kindly said, Love the little children. Love the little children who come unto me. Jesus valued children. He valued the parents of faith that shared their love shared their faith, their trust in God, their knowledge of God with those precious children. Today is the day when we value mothers, fathers, parents of faith for their love, for their service, for their faith, for your love, for your faith, for your service. For God does choose to allow us, parents, mothers and fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers, people of faith, to be his hands, to be his heart, to be his eyes, to be his love in this world towards those children that God loves so dearly. They have always been at the very center of God's gracious love, and they continue to be to this very day, this Christian family Sunday, this Mother's Day. And so it is appropriate. Today we honor our mothers. We honor fathers, parents of faith. Today we give thanks to God for them. Today we surely do treasure them. Those wonderful words that the children expressed this morning. Today we treasure them and offer to them in turn our love. 
our thanks, our deepest appreciation. To these, the hands, the arms, the heart of God, to each one of us and to all the world. Let us bow in prayer. Gracious Father, we must begin our prayer.